All right. Uh, as Tom said, my name is Kendall Cabe. Uh, I am with a local Chicago web design firm, Times Two Technology. Uh, we're building primarily with Joomla, uh, but we're also working with WordPress. So pretty much everything we're building against is using open source. Um, so that's kind of uh, a little background behind us. Um, I have a business partner that lives in the Grange. I live in Chicago. So we're all kind of local, but our reach is kind of nationwide. Uh, we just finished two projects in Portland, Oregon. So Joomla is pretty much everywhere. There's actually three Joomla days going on right now, one in France, one in the Netherlands, and one in uh, New England up in Vermont. So a lot of people have a lot of interest in Joomla. Uh, today's talk is going to be sort of a nutshell view of Joomla, what it is, the major components of it, and where it's going into the future. So what is Joomla? How many people have actually heard of Joomla? Not bad, about half the room. Um, Joomla is basically a web-based content management system. Uh, it's being used, it's a web application running on a server normally uh, that's externally available or intranet-based. Um, you're going to use it to create, maintain, and deliver your content online, uh, either to students, uh, faculty, potentially uh, web businesses are using this, e-commerce. Um, it can pretty much virtually maintain just about anything. Uh, written content, it can manage audio, video, uh, lots of pieces of information that almost anything you can do on a standard website can be done with Joomla. Again, it's a, the dynamic uh, nature of it makes it very nice to use. So how is it currently being used? Uh, it's being used for blogging. Uh, so a lot of people are blogging with it. There's about four major native blogging components that actually work with Joomla right now. Conferences are using it. Every Joomla day in the world is actually using a registration system. So in theory, this conference here could have potentially been run with the website with Joomla with registration software. There's three or four of them out there available. There are news and multimedia sites using it. Uh, I think I know of at least one very large uh, news or multimedia site in Greece that's using it. They're getting millions of users every day. So they are actually using it over there pretty heavily. Uh, there's some here in the U.S. that are converting to it or at least using it in intranet areas. Um, in my line of work, we're building websites for businesses all the time. So we're, you know, there are plenty of businesses going to it because it's simple, easy. Um, once you get past the minor learning curve on it, it's very easy to update your own site. You don't have to pay somebody 80 bucks an hour to go in and change five words in a piece of content. Um, enterprise. Enterprise is actually starting to use it very heavily. Uh, on the Joomla.org site, there is actually a list of uh, people that are actually currently using it. eBay is using it uh, for some of their sites. Uh, the Linux, the Linux.org, I believe, is actually using Joomla or is headed that direction. Um, if I remember correctly, at least I know they're using Linux. I'm not sure if they're using Joomla yet, but the city of Chicago may actually be using it as well. They were headed towards doing a lot of open source servers uh, three or four years ago and looking at content management that way. Uh, a lot of portfolio people will use it. There's a lot of software for portfolios out there that you can easily get up a portfolio for an artist, uh, a musician, or anything like that. And it's very easy to do. There's three or four applications for doing native social networking inside Joomla. There's one that we refer to as Facebook for Joomla, uh, which is called Jom Social. Um, there's also another one called Community Builder, and there's one called J Social Suite that is all about doing social networking on your own site. Um, E-commerce, there are two or three new emerging uh, shopping cart platforms that are coming out within Joomla. Uh, there's one already out there that's been around uh, for a very long time. Almost all of these are free for at least a base version of it is free. Um, some of them have more advanced stuff in them that you can buy compared to other software, it's still cheap. Uh, so if you're buying it, you're actually buying access to the software and the source code so you can get it, download it, and manipulate it yourself if you need to. Uh, a lot of companies do use it for intranets and extranets. Uh, so they may use it internally for their own people or for their own customer portals instead of their main website. Some of them are actually starting to convert their main websites as well because they see the use of it on their intranet and it's great and they want to start using it everywhere else. And then the last big piece that can be used for is customized solutions. Um, Joomla is actually built around PHP. 
Um, it runs on the LAMP stack, um, which I'm sure most people here understand what that is. Uh, if not, I'll show you in a second. It's normally hosted or self-hosted, meaning you're, you're running it on a server somewhere. It can be run locally for testing purposes. I do not recommend running it locally off of a laptop or something for a permanent site because obviously the minute you shut down your computer, your website's gone. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I actually use XAMPP on the Windows system. I tried WAMP for a while and they were so far behind that the uh, PHP versions and everything else, Joomla just didn't like it. Um, so I stopped using WAMP and went to XAMPP for it because it runs a lot better. Um, like I said, it is PHP based, does run best on the LAMP stack. Um, they, strangely enough, um, this is an interesting one, Microsoft is actually getting behind open source. Not sure why, I guess it's another area for them to start like dominating stuff, but anyway, they actually are working with Joomla and actually are contributing people's time and effort to help build um, part of the platform that will actually allow it to work on Microsoft servers. So instead of running it on Linux, you can run it on Windows with IIS and running either MySQL or, and PHP on there and actually run Joomla on Microsoft software. So they are contributing stuff that's tweaking the internal core Joomla to run with Microsoft. Um, I was shocked when I heard they were doing it and actually Microsoft is sponsoring and hosting the Joomla Day Chicago here in Chicago in August. So they're really kind of getting behind it. Um, again, it runs on MySQL, usually five plus. Uh, previously it was running on MySQL 4, but that sort of has gone out the window now. They've moved it up and the requirements have changed as they've changed the architecture. Uh, PHP 5, uh, PHP 5.2 for sure. 5.3, they're still working out some kinks on it. So if you're running it on a site that's running 5.3, you may run into some errors showing up on the screen that you don't really want to be seeing. There is kind of a workaround for it, but they're trying to get those out of the picture altogether. So right now, stick on 5.2 something um, for the time being until they can kind of get that fixed. So what are the five key parts of Joomla? Uh, basically, you have your content, navigation, the extensions, the user management, and then the look and feel slash templates. Um, there, that's the big five parts of Joomla that everybody, uh, that, that it's kind of built around. Uh, so let's take a look at what is the Joomla content. All right, Joomla content is going to be most everything on your website, uh, but in particular, it's going to be the articles. Uh, it's a content management system, so it's managing the content. The biggest majority of what's going to show up in your site and what the content is based around are the articles themselves. There are ways to put custom HTML into your website. So when you look at uh, things around the area of a website, you see stuff on the right, down at the bottom, across the top, little modules of content. They can be anything from something producing data, like in a shopping cart, it may be a featured items module, uh, or it could be something where you want to put in a photograph or you want to put in a little note to the user saying, hey, our site's going to be down. Um, that's basically content that's been done with a custom HTML module. Content from installed extensions, shopping cart. It's not articles. Um, they are stored inside the shopping cart. They're articles inside the shopping cart, but it's being delivered by that particular extension as opposed to the core Joomla system. So there are some things that will be, will be delivered by extensions that are installed in your site as opposed to you writing an article and it getting posted. Like the blogging pieces, uh, they're still considered, quote, Joomla articles, but they are being generated by the blog itself. So there may be extra stuff added into the article that the core Joomla system doesn't do, but that blogging platform does. You can also end up pulling content into your site from other sources. If you have, you can grab RSS readers that you can pull in RSS feeds from other sites. Uh, there's other ways to pull in other feed types as well to get data onto your site so that you're actually getting a lot of different content, a lot more dynamic content, um, and your content can, can actually keep changing. So the current content hierarchy, and let me explain what I mean by that. Joomla has somewhat changed the architecture. We went from 1.5 to 1.6. In theory, it should have been 1.5 to 2.0, um, but the higher-ups in Joomla just don't know why they decided to. They didn't decide to change to 2.0. Um, 1.5 1 should have been 2.0 in the beginning. Um, 1.0 was basically the platform and architecture, they switched from 
when they forked from Mambo. So if you've ever heard of Mambo, Joomla was actually a fork of Mambo. They kept it in 1.0. They kept it kind of similar to the architecture of Mambo. When they redid the architecture for 1.5, it's a huge departure. So it should have went to 2.0 then, but they decided, well, we're shooting for this 2.0 mark here that 1.5 is not going to be there. It's going to be about halfway there. So they went ahead and called it 1.5. Um, then they came along with 1.6 and the, and the architecture changed again. So when we get to the future part of it, I'll talk a little more about that. But right now in Joomla 1.5, the reason I'm even talking about it, it's still actually in support, in use, and will be until January of next year. So they're still, it's basically end of life next year early. So the current architecture is sections, categories, and articles. So you kind of have a three-tier uh, content hierarchy. Sections are your highest level container. Uh, they can have many categories. Your categories are kind of in the middle here. Um, they can contain many articles. And then the articles themselves are the lowest tier. Uh, in this circumstance, usually with Joomla, the article is the web page is the content. Um, articles can be uncategorized, which means that they don't have a section in category, except in the back end they have to be stored that way. So there is a section called uncategorized, there is a category called uncategorized. What this used to be referred to in Joomla 1.0 were static pages. So it's kind of those pages that don't really have a categorization. And you can put them out there and still have them on your site and still link to them, but they really are not part of a particular category structure in your content hierarchy. <clears throat> right now, there's a limitation of you can only put one category on a given article in Joomla 1.5. Even in 1.6, with the new change of the content hierarchy, you still can only do that. There are some extra uh, content pieces we'll look at in a second that do allow you to do some multi-categorization, uh, but even still, there's only a couple of things that do it, and for SEO purposes, you only really want it in one place anyway, uh, which is a big consideration when you're using content management or any site. You want to make sure that you're getting the same content with the same link and you're not getting duplicate URLs because Google and everybody else doesn't like that. Joomla does have WYSIWYG capabilities. So there are WYSIWYG editors built into the core itself. Um, it's lacking. Uh, it is tiny MCE. If you've ever heard of it, I think it's used in a lot of other systems as well. It's not a bad little system, but it's very rudimentary. It only gives you a certain amount of stuff and you have to know a lot about what, what the link is to where your file is and what the name of it is. It's not very graphical. Uh, some pieces are, some, most things are not. It's, if you think of it as a basic word editor, you've got bold, italics, underlines, bullets, stuff like that. When you start adding pictures and inserting media, you're kind of on your own. There are many third-party editors available, some that have more, um, more advanced functions than anybody else. A lot of more of them do a lot more things with inserting images. You can actually browse the directory and find the image you're after. Uh, some of them that I use and have used, uh, mostly I end up using Joomla Content Editor, uh, commonly referred to as JCE. Um, it's free for the core editor. There are some subscription add-ons that actually add even more advanced utilities to the system. Uh, that's a small, I think, 20 bucks a year, and you can get all the subscriptions and anything new that comes out. Again, you're getting access to the software. You're not buying the product. You're basically Buying a membership in a club is what most of the things you see in Joomla world when you're dealing with extensions, you're buying access to a club, you're getting support, you're getting access to the software, you're not really buying the software. So it's the whole idea of paid for OS software. So um, WYSIWYG Pro is actually a commercial product. It's one of those that none of the editor is free. You have to actually buy access to the editor. So, and it's a little more expensive. It does everything JCE does. Some people like it better than JCE. It's just a matter of preference, but it's also a matter, to me, it's a matter of money. So if a client says, well, I want free, then you don't really have a lot of choice with it. There are a couple other ones out there. Um, Joomla does actually have an extension directory. So if you want to find out what's available in Joomla, which right now there's 7,000 plus extensions you can use to extend Joomla. Um, it's actually out there, extensions.joomla.org, uh, which I'll try to put in as a slide at the end of this before I give it to them for, for posting. Uh, in Joomla, there are some default content layout types that relate to the content hierarchy. Uh, there's a standard view for an article. 
There's a standard view for a new article entry. So if you're allowing people to submit articles, there is a category list layout, which is going to give you sort of a description and then a list of your articles in that category at the bottom, sort of a tabular list, as opposed to the category blog layout, which is going to give you somewhat of a blog layout, which I'll show you later and point it out when we get there. Uh, I'm going to pull up one of the things on my computer and show it to you. Same goes true for a section. With a section, it's pulling all the categories and all the articles, so you get everything kind of lumped together and then shown on there in a list and a blog layout. So that's why you can easily do, even with the core Jumo system, you can actually do blogging pretty easily. Uh, there's also the front page blog layout, which by default is the layout that Joomla puts in as the front page itself. It's similar to the category and section blog layout, except that it pulls its information from a front page manager, sort of like a featured articles thing, which we'll see later. They actually called it that in Joomla 1.6. Um, you basically can tell things, I want this to show up on my front page, and you can manage them separately from all the other articles. It's actually kind of a, a very useful feature. Now, talking about some of the downfalls and shortfalls of the Joomla core, there are some of them that people decided I can't live with. So third-party developers came up and said, we want to make the Joomla core content better. So they came up and created content creation kits. If you've used anything like Drupal or some of the other open source CMSs, they kind of already have this in. Um, it gives you the ability to replace the core content system. It uh, gives you a better way of handling the content itself. You can define extra fields that work with a, with a in particular article type. You can define multiple article types and have those all within the same system. So you could have a product page. You could have um, an about page template. You could have a lot of other stuff that has certain defined fields on that particular type. Um, it does give enhancements beyond the core. A lot of the systems will include things like rating systems, um, voting systems. They'll include uh, commenting systems in this, this CCK component, which you can get with Joomla, but you're going to add three, four, five more extensions that you have to manage. Whereas with this one, with some of these, you're going in the same place, doing in one location, and you're managing all of your content. Um, there are a couple of them that build off of storing the data in the Joomla article database. They use the article table versus using their own set. Flexi content stores it in the Joomla tables, whereas I think most of the rest of them have built their own storage system for the articles. So if you're worried about going to Joomla 1.6 later because the, one of these systems didn't convert, then you may want to stick with one that leaves the articles in the Joomla system. Um, Right now, all these are working on versions of their software that will be compatible with the new architecture going forward. They all are either out now or they will be released within the next couple of months. So it's not like they're going away. They decided, hey, we need to convert and keep going because still the Joomla core doesn't have everything we want in the system. And for those people that went with these systems already, they decided they wanted to keep going with the system, even in the new architecture. Even though it's been improved, they wanted to keep going with what they had because they already spent the time on it. Now they do a migration from 1.5 to 1.6. They move stuff from K2 to K2, and they're done. Uh, there's not a lot of extra conversion that has to happen. So the next piece of the puzzle is the navigation. How do you get around your site? Um, how does Joomla manage all these articles, and how do you get them to come up? So. What is the navigation in Joomla? For the most part, it's menus. Uh, when you build your site map, as you're building out your design for your website, you're going to have a lot of stuff sitting around that says, well, I want this to go here, and then from that page, I want this and this and this. Most often or not, your site map is going to very heavily mimic your navigational structure. may not be exact, but it is actually mimicking uh, most of the site map. How is the navigation created? Mostly with menus. Uh, there, it can be internal linking within the extensions or within the articles themselves that take you from one page to the other. So that's another way of navigation that is not menu-based. Then there are also external links that may be in your content or in the menus that actually take you to off-site content. Again, it's navigation, but it's not menu-based. So there, that's the two major things are internal links and menus that actually do it. Why is it important? because it's basically how your content is made available. 
if you have articles out there in the system and you have no way to access them, then you basically can't get to them. They're just sitting there, they're doing no good. Nobody can get to them, including Google. So they never end up getting indexed. It's also how the visitors get around your site. If you've got intuitive navigation and you've got a good way to get where people need to go and find what they want, your users are going to be happy. They're going to find the, the, the stuff that you want them to find and they're going to keep coming back to your site looking for new stuff. So the types, like I said, the types of navigation is menu-based and links within the articles. Uh, what are the parts of the Joomla menu system? Basically, the menu itself, it's sort of a bucket that holds effectively all the menu items. The menu items themselves are the different entries in a menu that you may or may not click on because it could be a separator that's just a drop down. Um, but for the most part, the menu items are what you see in the menu itself. Now when you click on it, what you're clicking on is a particular menu type. And those types can be searching for an article, looking at a section view, you might have a view that puts you into the featured products in a shopping cart. You may have something that takes you to your blog software. Um, so the menu item types are what define the views that people are able to see. Components will define different views within their own system. Some will take you to just a landing page for the component. Others will give you half a dozen to a dozen different possible views that you can use with their actual extension. With the Joomla core system, the content layouts that I showed you earlier, those are all views within the Joomla article views. So when you go in and say, I want to create an article, you get all those choices. And then the menu module itself, which is an extension within Joomla, is what is used to actually display the menu itself. So when you're looking on a page and you see a menu, that's usually being shown by a Joomla module. So let's take a quick look at the Joomla website. So this is a standard Joomla website. This is the one that comes with the core system when you get it. Yes, it's ugly. Um, I do realize that and this is not something that you really want people to use on their site. So they say, oh, I want to use that one for my, you know, for my website. You know, if you're building a website for somebody, you know, just walk up to them and kind of smack them around a little bit. This is not what you want. You know, there's plenty of other ones out there. I can build a better one than this uh, that will look a lot better. Um, it's here as an example. It really is just the example it shows you enough about how you can build your own template. It's there for you to reference. It's not really used to build a website around. Um, so use it for that. Use it as a reference. This is the Joomla, one of the Joomla menu modules. You can see it's actually styled differently. Uh, there are module Chrome that you can actually do that you can say define it as this type and it's going to do something different than like this one over here. These are both standard Joomla menu modules, but they have been set with a different suffix so that the Chrome is actually different. This is also a main menu module. This is a different module that's showing latest news. Like I said, there's different types of content that you can pick up from different modules. This one is showing the most popular articles. This is a poll system within Joomla that comes with the core in 1.5. So you can do a lot of extra content stuff and have a lot of interactivity as well. Um, there are a lot of other products that are out there that you can download for free or very cheaply that allow you to improve even more over this. There's some latest news stuff that actually comes out that you can get that allows you to put in small blocks of actual of the text itself and you can define how many how many characters you want to show up. You can make it show up in I think eight or nine different ways for a latest news module. So there's ones that have taken this that much further and have actually made it even better. And most of the stuff you can get a hold of um, is usually free. There's a lot of stuff out there free, you just have to look for it uh, and pick which one's right for you. There is no easy way to pick which one's right. A lot of cases you want to install it on a local drive, throw it in, play around with it, see if it works for your needs. If it does, then you put it on the site that you're building for production. Um, I never put anything on a production site unless I've either used it before and I know it works or 
I put it on a test site first, run it through my tests, and then I put it on the production site. So this here is actually the content. I had mentioned the front page blog layout. Everything from my test site down to the bottom here, this is what is considered the blog layout. You've got some leading articles at the top. You've got intro articles down here where you've got the, the two column layout. And in this particular case, there are none set up. But there's also links at the bottom. So if you have more than the number for the, in, for the leading and the intros, you'll get a list of articles at the bottom as well that don't have any text. It's just a link that sends you off to where it needs to go. Um, on, the temp, on the demo uh, site that comes with Joomla, they have content layouts here. Uh, they also have example pages, which shows it a lot better. Um, so like this is a category blog, pointing at a specific category, pulling out the content. And down here you'll see these are the links at the bottom where in this case there's like eight or nine articles set up to show. Five of them are up top and three or four of them are down at the bottom as links. You can also alter these, uh, which we'll talk about in a second in templates, but you can actually change the look of this just in your template itself. If you change to another template, your look kind of goes away because you have ways you can override the output of extensions and make it your own inside the Joomla framework. And you can do it without actually hacking the core, which is really, really, really bad uh, because then you're stuck with when you need to upgrade, you have to make those changes again. So you never actually want to look at hacking the core of Joomla. You always want to try to either build an extension to do what you need to do or find something that already does it. So we'll actually pop back into the back end in a little bit. Once I get through this, we'll pop in the back end before we go on to what's in the future. Now with Joomla extensions, as I said, there are 7,000 plus extensions out there right now. There's approaching 1,000 available for the new architecture for Joomla 1.6 and beyond. Um, some of the newer ones, it's taking longer to get it converted because it turned into being more of a migration than an actual upgrade uh, for most of the extension developers. Some of them had not truly converted to the native Joomla interface of using the MVC architecture. So they're having to do a lot more work because in previous attempts, you could do just enough to get it to run in 1.5 and you didn't have to completely go to MVC. So the ones that didn't do MVC are now struggling to get their stuff converted to 1.6 because that's the only thing you can use now. So with the, those extensions, there are four major types. Uh, there's components, which are usually fairly large. We'll talk about a little more. There are modules, plugins, and then templates are considered extensions. Um, then there is other installable content, which is kind of an extension, but not really. You can actually install language packs for Joomla. So you can actually do multilingual sites as well. So what is a component? The component is sort of the largest, most complex extension. Uh, it's going to be the overall, if you think of a, an extension, the biggest one you can think of would be a shopping cart being used for e-commerce. That's the component. Usually every time Joomla loads a page, even when you're using the core system, a component is actually loading. The articles that load in Joomla are being load by, loaded by the com content component. So it actually is a component built inside the core that's showing even your standard Joomla articles. When you look at some of those content creation kits, they are components. They're actually loading all their stuff in a component and showing it on the page. As I said, components are normally the major part of a page. When we looked at the category layout and we looked at the front page blog layout, that's the major portion of the page. Everything else around it is either going to be, is likely to be a module, which is a little smaller part. For most components, not all, but most, there are two pieces to the puzzle. There's the administrative side in the back end, and then there's the front end access that the user ends up seeing or interacts with. Like I said, in the case of a shopping cart, it's how they interact with the categories all the way down to where the products are. That's the front end interface for that particular component. Now for the modules, they're a little more lightweight and they can be very flexible. In the case of a shopping cart, it may be a, a module that shows the latest products on the right-hand side in the sidebar. You 
they do not, modules don't have to be linked to a particular component. A lot of components will ship with their own modules because it's built around their components so they know what they're doing, they know how they want it to come out. Um, other people do build modules and plugins for other components as well that are not released with the product itself, but they're downloadable from somebody's site or from the main site. Um, in the case of custom HTML stuff that we had shown, that I had mentioned earlier, that's a module that's completely standalone. Doesn't do anything, doesn't interface with anything else. It is just showing custom HTML on the web page. Uh, weather modules, if you want something to show weather on your site, <clears throat> that is ultimately a module that's standalone. Uh, there, I don't believe there is any actual weather components that actually work with Joomla, at least not yet, uh, but they actually are sort of the other pieces of the puzzle, like the liking Facebook. There's plenty of modules that allow you to link to Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and everything else that are out there showing updates and allowing you to actually go from your Joomla site to those things. There are other modules. There's sort of the sidebar widgets that you see around the site. So if we end up looking at this, everything that's not part of this main part here is a module. This is a, um, I forgot what it's called now, but this is a, a news flash that allows you to put in little text messages that will pop up and rotate as you go through. They could be announcements about something upcoming. Um, the things down the sides here, the main menu modules, those, the, these are actually menu modules. This is the breadcrumbs module that allows you to track where you are in the site. There's a search module here. This is a banner module down here. So they're doing very specific things. The banner is tied in with a component module. The component, banner component does not actually have a front end user interface. It only uses modules to show the banners themselves. Jump back to this, okay. So plugins themselves are smaller pieces of code, usually little single entity, more or less event handlers. Within Joomla, you can actually embed plugins into content. <clears throat> so you may have a plugin that does video. So you want to show a YouTube video right in the middle of one of your articles. There's plenty of plugins out there that allow you to throw in a small piece of code that's set up with two little brackets around it. You throw it in, it loads the YouTube, and it does everything for you, and all you have to remember is something this long versus having to write code this long. So it's actually, the little plugins do a lot of stuff. They're processed like events. As you load an article, all the plugins are actually processed through the events, and everything is then rendered on the page as it comes out of the database to the web browser. <clears throat> There are certain specific plugins in Joomla itself that come with the core. There's an email sort of obfuscator. It actually changes any email address it finds on the site into a JavaScript click. So that when people are actually scanning the actual site, if somebody's coming out with a robot trying to scrape email addresses, it scrapes JavaScript as opposed to scraping the actual email address. When you click on it, it pops up and gives you the correct email, but when anybody else reads the code, the email address is not there. That's just one example of what's there for the Joomla, the actual content stuff, the, some of the plugins. Now with managing the extensions, Joomla does actually have an extension manager. It controls the installation and uninstallation of all the components and plugins and modules, languages and templates. <clears throat> so it controls every aspect of all the add-ons in the Joomla system. Some extensions will have their own little installers that kind of base around the Joomla installer because they're installing specific content that are add-ons to their specific component, like the Joomla Content Editor, JCE. You can add the extra subscription modules that extend JCE that has nothing to do with Joomla itself. It only works with Joomla, with, within JCE. So they have their own plugin installer that utilizes the Joomla installer architecture, but it doesn't actually install it with the Joomla installer itself. It's only installing content into the JCE framework. So while it uses it, you can't install it directly from the Joomla extension manager itself. You have to go through JCE. There are some other programs that do that, like some of the shopping carts with their payment plugins, you install it from within inside, inside the shopping cart. Whereas other people have decided they want to use the Joomla installer, so the plugins actually get installed inside Joomla 
and you can write your own, do your own. You don't have to understand exactly everything about their API and how to make it work. You can write it to use the Joomla API and then integrate with their system. And again, as I said, all the uninstallations of the extensions are handled again through the extension manager. Just a quick look through with the user manager itself. Um, there is a user manager in Joomla, lets you add, edit, delete users, turn them on, turn them off. Um, there's limited access control levels in Joomla 1.5. That changed in 1.6, we'll get to that. There are some core groups in Joomla like registered users, uh, authors, editors, publishers, managers, administrator, super administrator. Those are only the real groups inside Joomla 1.5. Again, people decided, well, we don't like that. We want to have more flexibility with our access control and with our grouping. They ended up creating new components and new extensions that actually extend or completely replace the Joomla user manager system. So there are extensions out there. If you need more and you want to use Joomla 1.5, they do exist. Some of that has changed in Joomla 1.6. Now, Joomla templates itself, I'm going to pop out to a website real quick. There's a lot of template clubs out there that actually design, build, and sell templates. Um, they ultimately will go through, they take the time to do all the graphics, they build all the code behind it, all the JavaScript, the PHP, the XML files, they produce all the images. You go out, you pay 20, 30 bucks for a template, you can download any of the templates in their club and you can use it on one site. There are also, if you're doing development in the sense of you're building tons of websites, they, a lot of them also offer um, extension de the developer uh, setups where you can actually use as many as you want on as many websites as you want for a single price. Usually it's anywhere from 250 to $300. Um, some go up to as much as 500. But in the end, if you spend 35, 40 bucks per template, as soon as you've hit 10 templates and you're planning to do 20 or 30 more, you've already spent that much money by buying them singly. If you bought the developer license in the beginning, you've already recouped your money anyway. But you can see here, this is one of their templates with the different, uh, this one is based around the idea of a conference. Uh, this is some of the stuff they can do with their uh, menus that they've developed. These are some of the things that can be done with it. Um, a lot of things you'll find, there are definitions of the module positions, the different variations of the modules. This is just what you can do in different areas of the site to make use different module Chrome to make it look differently. And almost on every template, especially with this club, every template that they do, this is available on every single template along with the different module positions that are available in here. There are 68 different positions that you can put content around or outside the main content areas. So you usually scroll down, they give you a page that shows you what all the module positions actually are. And it also gives you more information about how to install it. Uh, this particular one, and you'll see a lot of them if you start digging around with the template clubs, most of them have either come up with their own or are utilizing what's called a template framework. Uh, for Rocket Theme, it's called Gantry. For some of the others, there's one called ZenGrid. Uh, there's one called the Morph Framework. Um, they basically have built a framework around the idea of building templates. It's what they use to build their own templates quite a few of them have said, hey, wait a minute, let's just release this framework and everybody else can start using it too. So at least for Rocket Theme right now, the Gantry framework that, that all the templates from 2010 and 11 are built around Gantry, that framework is actually open source. They've released it as an open source product. It is completely separate from the Rocket Theme template club. You can get it and start using it yourself. And so you could build Joomla templates right straight around just the idea of using their framework. A lot of the other people have done the same. You can actually go either to their website and download it from there free or 
if you go into their template club, then you're going to have it anyway. Um, but I think mostly Rocket Theme is the only one that has actually put up its own website just for the Gantry framework. Uh, and if you go to their homepage, um, they also build uh, templates for WordPress, Drupal, Magento, PHP, BB3, and, and several other things that they chose to go into ex besides just Joomla templates. So they've really expanded this. I think they even have built the Gantry framework to work with like WordPress. So it's even still there as well. So let's pop back in here. So the basic parts of a template, the code files themselves, the PHP that it's built around, the HTML inside that, the JavaScript files that make other things work, uh, the CSS to make all the layout positioning and everything of that nature work, all the background images, the images themselves, and then the XML configuration files, which in this case there is usually a template details.xml that defines all the pieces of the template including the module positions. So everything you see that I showed you on that screen with the different module positions, they're all defined within XML files. The system knows how to read it, they can, it pulls them up and it makes it available to you in the back end as you're working with modules and you're installing a module, I want to put it in header D, then you can go in and you'll see it in the list that says here, put it in position header D. Now with uh, some of the stuff that some of you may have been in with relation to licensing and things of that nature, um, Images and I'm trying to think of what else it is. I know for, for a fact, images do not have to be released under GPL. They are actually, they actually can be released under a separate license. The code itself that runs with Joomla, the PHP, um, that has to be released under GPL. But there are other aspects to it. If you want, really want to know, I can give it to you later through email or something. But there are certain aspects of your template that if you release it, you do not have to release those under the GPL. So you can say that the images in this system cannot be redistributed. They are, you know, they're basically under a different copyright. But the PHP itself has to be released under GPL. Uh, if you're looking into doing anything with WordPress, you're really going to want to make sure you know how that works because that, they're even more strict about GPL access. Um, they want all the themes have to be released under GPL except for those couple little parts that are there. So how do you get a template? Like I said, you can buy one from the template providers. If you don't like what they're making, build it yourself. Um, if you know anything about XHTML, CSS, if you can build a website using XHTML, CSS, you basically know enough to build a Joomla template. All you have to learn is to have enough understanding of the necessary Joomla calls to make it work with Joomla. And there's only about five or six lines of PHP that you actually have to know to make any standard XHTML CSS template work as a Joomla template. It's very, very easy. And there are quite a few free tutorials out there that will walk you through almost step by step. There's quite a few on the Joomla.org site as well that will walk you through how everything actually works. So before we get into what's next, let's go take a look at the back end for Joomla. Well, that didn't help. Wrong site. Okay, so this is the back end for Joomla. You'll see that things are divided into what you would consider sort of the standard ideas. That's where the five key parts of Joomla came from. You have your site configuration page uh, information. This is the control panel we're looking at now. The user manager where you manage users. Uh, media manager and then your global configuration which controls things like access to the database. Um, what the uh, mail configuration is, what your site name is, uh, a lot of the overall SEO stuff that deals with the full site title, meta description, keywords. Um, then you have where you manage your navigation. You have your menu manager where you create the bucket. Uh, then under that you have the buckets where you create the items.
based on the types of what menu it is. Then here's where you have your content, the article manager itself, where you can then manage the content hierarchy, the sections and categories, and then also the front page manager, where you manage the articles that are only assigned to be on the front page. So that's where these, sh that's how you would access this. And then they split from the extensions, they split the components themselves out to their own menu. Everything else is under extensions. The module, plugin, template manager, language manager, they're all under here with the installation manager here. The components were split out because normally they're bigger pieces. They wanted them separate so they actually, you could actually find them a lot easier. So if you install a component in the system, it has a back end access, you're gonna find it here under components. Now the module is like a featured product module or something like that is gonna end up being under the module manager. Now for the most part with like articles, it's basically a tabular layout within the system showing you where everything is here. It usually gives you what the access level is, um, what the section and category is. Anything you see blank is considered an uncategorized article. So again, that's why I said it's sort of static pages. They really aren't categorized into anything. Also shows you who the author was, when it was created, how many hits and what its ID is. Uh, you can also change the ordering of the articles, like you're doing a blog layout and you want this particular article for extensions to be first, you can move it up in the, in the queue and based on what your order is on the menu, you can actually throw that in and change the order around on the fly inside the back end. Um, there are different levels of access. Only the managers, administrators, super administrators can access the back end. Anybody else has to access through the front end. There are public users which have no access to the site except what they can see publicly. There are registered users which means anybody that's registered to the site but has no special privileges. They can get into stuff that you've set for registered users only. Then there are authors, editors, and publishers. Sort of a uh, content workflow that you, can that you can utilize. You can have people writing articles or then you can have editors that can come in and either write their own articles or edit somebody else's. Then you can also have publishers that can come in and do all those. And then they can also publish the articles so they show up on your site. All that's handled through the front end. They do not have access to the back end. The reason being there's a lot of extra stuff in the back end that those kind of people that are gonna be doing those tasks really don't need to be messing with. So when you're setting up users, you wanna basically create the lowest level possible for a person, then if they can't do what they need to do, then you move them up one level until they can. So like if they need backend access, start them out as a manager. Don't give them admin or super admin. Uh, if you can ever help it, don't give anybody super admin because they can easily go in and screw up the entire site um, if they don't know what they're doing. The only people I give super admin access to are IT, the IT professionals for a company um, or anybody that has actually already knows how to use Joomla and they're not planning on you know destroying the site because it's very easy to do without really even trying um, and that's when you only have the correct access now if they have access to the database or the server itself then they can mess it up even worse and then you don't have to worry about it anyway because they're doing it some other way so that is what the current system looks like um, the module manager is very similar to the plugin manager, to the template manager. Um, what you get with a lot of these things when you go in and look at it, there will be other parameters that go along with these modules. So within Joomla, you'll have module parameters, advanced parameters, system parameters. Not everything defines all those tabs. So you may see different things at different times. But the general premise is this is what the parameters are that you're setting so that when you view this on the front end, you end up seeing what you've told it to show. Like here with the module class suffix, this is used to change the module Chrome. So if you want it to have a green border around it, you might put dash green in here. If you want it to have a red border, you might put dash red. Um, that tells the system that when I render this system, when I render this module, I want it to put a red border around it, so do whatever you gotta do to make it be that red border. That's the nice thing about Joomla in the sense that you can do that very easily with CSS and with the, the XHTML and stuff that allows you to do overrides, add Chrome to your template, do whatever you need to do, a lot of it can be defined without writing one line of code. 
Now, what I had said about previously with uh, Joomla templates were that you also had the ability to do layout overrides. And in this case, they're template overrides, not layout overrides. Layout overrides come in Joomla 1.6, which gives you even more ability. The reason they're nice uh, and to be able to do template overrides is you can override the output of a core system without changing the core. So if you want the blog layout to do something a little bit different, you can write your own override and that anytime your template is called, anytime your template is called, that override picks up for that category blog layout. So that now you get your view of how you want people to see that blog layout. You can do it with any of the Joomla core systems, anything it's written as in the MVC architecture, any other extensions, you can override those as well. You can only override basically the output, unfortunately, because it only gives you a certain, certain setup of it. It's the template file itself that shows the output of the data. You can't change what data gets pulled from the extension. You can only change what's passed into you through that data model inside the architecture. If you need to do other pieces, you're going to have to actually change that particular view and the code associated to it, and you're actually end up, going to end up changing that application. So as if you do any of that and you make any changes, make sure you record what you changed so that the next time you do an upgrade to like your shopping cart or to the Joomla core, you know what you changed so that when you overwrite it and it goes away, you know what you need to go back and fix. So, and I, like I said, don't change the Joomla core. Um, a lot of people make that mistake because they don't realize that template overrides exist or they don't realize that the next time they need to do a Joomla upgrade because there's a huge security hole that just was exposed, uh, just like with Microsoft, you know, there are upgrades that need to be applied. Uh, and with almost any web technology that's out there, there are security holes. I don't care what it is. Somebody will find something that allows you to get into a site or a server or whatever. So if somebody says, well, Joomla is not all that secure, well, take a look at WordPress, take a look at Microsoft, take a look at any of the Linux software or anything that's out there, they all have security issues. If you're not on top of it and you're not staying on top of it and keeping things upgraded, anybody can be hacked. It's simple as that. It's up to the user that's maintaining a website or a server or a PC or whatever to stay on top of their security. That's what makes it secure in the first place. If you're not doing that, then you really don't need to be having something on the internet because eventually it's going to get hacked into. So let me show you real quick what is coming up with Joomla or what's already out there and what's actually, what it actually looks like and how it differs. This is now one of the sample uh, templates that come with Joomla 1.6. Um, they got rid of the old, the other one that was out there. Uh, it's no longer there. Uh, it is, actually shouldn't say that, it is there, but it's not one of the default ones again. You actually have to install it to get access to it. But the idea is they've changed the templates in the sense it looks very similar, but what they have started doing is they've changed a lot of stuff. And let's just run through what's there, um, and then I'll come back into this and I'll show you what is some of the changes. So one of the big changes that Joomla did uh, like some of the other software that's out there, they've gone to a six-month uh, short-term support and long-term support release cycle. Uh, they're doing six-month STSs, uh, and then they're doing 18-month LTSs, which Joomla 1.5 is one of the is the current LTS. So Joomla 1.5 has been out there for two or three years now. Uh, it actually goes end of life next January, I believe. I've got a slide on here. Um, it goes into life early next year. So then you get from there to Joomla 1.6. Well, Joomla 1.6 was just released in January this year. Um, it's six months. July of this year, they are shooting to have the next version of Joomla out, which is supposed to be Joomla 1.7. That will be supported for another six months. After that, it comes around to the next LTS, which will be in January of next year, somewhere in that time frame. It's targeted to be called Joomla 1.8. It could be called Joomla 2.0. It all depends on the higher-ups as what they decide to do. 
Um, Jumo 1.6 is the first STS of the new release cycle of the new architecture that has been modified from 1.5 to take Jumo into the future. So here are what the proposed current dates are. Uh, Jumo 1.5 will go end of life April, not January. Um, it, goes, it goes end of life three months after the next LTS, uh, which you can see here, Jumo 1.8 is supposed to come out um, sometime around January 2012. Uh, Jumo 1.6 itself will go end of life August of this year, one month after the next STS comes out. Um, I've got July because that's when Jumo 1.7 comes out. They changed it slightly when it, since I made this thing. Um, Jumo 1.7 will go until January of next year and will go end of life in February. Jumo 1.8 will come out in January. That's why 1.7 will go into life and then it will be supported until sometime in, uh, in and around October of 2013. So it's going to be around for another 18 months afterwards, uh, either 15 or 18 months. So that'll be the next LTS that comes out. If you want to learn more about how this is actually working uh, on the developer site where you get information about actually developing for Joomla, uh, they have a strategy page that talks about their new release cycle. What they're trying to accomplish with this release cycle is keeping it from being migrations versus upgrades. So what's supposed to happen in July is everything that was built for Joomla 1.6, there may only need to be minor tweaks to make your product available for Joomla 1.7. They're trying to keep it from having to take and rewrite an entire architecture from going from one version to the next. 1.0 to 1.5 was a huge migration. 1.5 to 1.6 was a bigger migration than they wanted it to be, but it's still a migration. In theory, 1.6 to 1.7 is supposed to be an upgrade, not a migration. So we'll see what happens in July. But the idea is that's what they want to do going forward because that way people can stay on top of it. More features can be added in a shorter period of time. You don't have to wait on a feature to be done. The feature itself, if it's in the trunk and it's ready to go, it will be released in that next STS or next LTS. You don't have to wait till the next LTS for it to come out. So you're not waiting 18 months for your your thing that you submitted to Joomla to come out. So what changed? Uh, with Joomla 1.6, what did it introduce? Well, there's a new enhanced architecture. Uh, they've changed some of the user management. They've changed the content hierarchy. Uh, they've changed a lot of stuff. There are some new features that were added. There are some changes to existing features. And then they also eliminated uh, some of the features that are currently in the core. They didn't necessarily get rid of them, but they took them out of the core. So what changed in the content? Well, the sections got eliminated. Now it's categories only, which makes a lot more sense. Um, you're no longer limited to a single section and category. You can now do nested categories. So you can have category, subcategory one, subcategory two, subcategory three, as many as you want. Um, you're still only limited to having one category, one article, one category per article. So an article can only be defined inside one category. Um, as I said, some of the CCKs have ways around that. So it is possible if you want to do that and you want to have multiple content in multiple categories, you're going to have to use something different than the Joomla core. But there are also things out now that allow you to tell Google and the, and the search engines that when I'm looking at this duplicate content, the real content is over here, so it does not ding you for having duplicate content. So you can keep your page rank and all your, where you're at on Google and still have duplicated content on your site. The front page manager, as I mentioned earlier, was renamed to featured articles. Makes a lot more sense. Uh, there are no more tables. Joomla 1.5 right now, unless you're using a template that has already done this, the Joomla core itself produces ta table output. It actually still uses tables. Unlike most of the template clubs, what they ended up doing is they wrote over uh, template overrides that actually got rid of the table output and made it into the XHTML CSS div tag setup. They wanted to get rid of the table output because it really is not very good for one thing for usability. Uh, it's not good for people that are coming in with disabilities. The screen readers have a lot harder time with tables than they do with the, the CSS stuff. So it actually works a lot better. So now it's completely tableless core output. Uh, they went ahead and got rid of it all and re restructured everything. They fixed the save functionality and added to it. Right now you've got a save and you've got an apply. 
Um, whereas now in the new system, you're going to have save, which closes it, where which saves it, you stay there. It's kind of like what apply is now. You have save a new, which means you save it, you create a new article in the same category. You have save and close, which means you're done editing, you want to save it, I want to get out of it. And then you have save and copy, which is similar to save a new, except that now you create a new copy, it opens up the new copy, now you can continue editing. Those have actually made it very nice for a lot of people that are doing a lot of content entry. Makes it a lot easier, a lot faster. Uh, people are very happy with it. They have new SEO capabilities added. You can now do, whereas in 1.5, unless you were using a third-party extension, you couldn't put um, keywords, description uh, for SEO purposes on categories or sections. It just didn't exist. They added that in Joomla 1.6 because they realized it should have been there in the first place. Um, you don't need the third-party extensions in a lot of cases unless you're doing some interesting stuff that you need it and you want to do it graphically instead of having to learn how to write HT access stuff. Um, a lot of the SEO stuff that is in the third-party is now in the Joomla core. There is a uh, 404 redirect component now, so you can go in and find all your 404 errors and redirect them to a page on your site instead of it producing a 404. Uh, that's one of the things that's missing in Joomla 1.5 unless you use a third-party extension. So what did they change with navigation? It was mostly untouched. Uh, what they did with templates and what they did with some other pieces have filtered into the navigation. Now, instead of having to go to the template itself to assign a particular template to a particular menu, with templates, what they ended up doing is they actually added new template styles. What you would normally have to do with Joomla is you'd have to take a template, copy it, make your changes to the new template, then you can assign that to a menu. So if you have three or four different styles you want to do with the same template, you have three or four different templates. Unless you write it into one template where you do a lot of PHP code in the back end that slows everything down, you really end up having multiple templates. Well, they got rid of that. You can create styles now that let you change what you want to change with a single template and now you can actually assign those styles to an individual menu as opposed to having to go to the template itself. Now you can pick those styles inside the menu item itself. Uh, the other piece they did is they did change some of the administrative back end. It's a little more user friendly, looks a little better. They changed a little bit of the navigation around. A lot of it had to do with the save functionality I talked about a minute ago, uh, but some of that is actually a little bit better. Some of the bigger changes with user management is where everything actually changed. You now have a built-in manual user approval. You can actually go in and manually approve users yourself, whereas previously, as soon as they you know, activated their account, they were a user on the system. You can get rid of a lot of spam now in Joomla 1.6 because now you are approving the users manually you can choose to, you don't have to, but you can choose to manually approve the users as opposed to what you could not do in Joomla 1.5. They've also added advanced ACL. Uh, you now can have unlimited levels of ACL. You now have the ability to create your own groups and group users together. Uh, you can set permissions at multiple levels. You can set them at like category level. You can set them at the article level. Uh, you can set them at an extension level. Uh, if the extension utilizes the ACL system, uh, then there is inheritance for permissions. So you can set permissions at a category level, and then below that, every article will inherit those actual permissions. So what changed with extensions themselves? Uh, they've added new additional module configuration options. Uh, you can add, now add the, the uh, layout overrides at a module level. You can do the um, some, some of the other pieces in the module itself. This one I haven't looked a lot at because I haven't gotten there yet. I've been still digging into it, uh, trying to get to everything and haven't got to all the pieces yet. Now you can actually do language overrides, whereas previously you had to change the actual language file to change something. You can now change the language as an override and it doesn't affect the original language file itself. So that's actually very nice because now you don't have to actually alter the original, like editing the core, you don't have to edit the original language anymore. Like I said, they also added a new 404 redirect component. They improved the media manager. Uh, it was in desperate need of being updated. 
uh, and fixed. Uh, they've actually added changes to the installer that now allow for doing updates as opposed to a update where you uninstall and reinstall the component. It's easier now to do physical updates to a component. They can send you an update file that takes you from version 1.1 .1 to version 1.2 and the file is one-eighth of the size of what it would be if you were doing the standard install, which it does in 1.5 right now. So that's a big boon to the extension developers. They really can get it a lot better. So I said with templates, um, template styles, you can assign them on the menu items. Um, they did add some new um, templates they've included for the front end for example purposes. And for the back end, they actually modified the new template. Uh, there are several of the template clubs that are out there that also produce admin templates that make it even better than what it is actually right now and make it even more usable. Uh, makes it a little more uh, understandable. You, when you look at something, you can see, oh, I need to go there to do this, as opposed to the Joomla, the Joomla one. It's not quite as intuitive. They've also done layout overrides, which are different than template overrides. Uh, you now can do an override of a specific layout and assign it to a specific menu item as opposed to physically doing one override that does everything. So if you want a specific menu item to new, use this new blog layout, but you want every other blog layout to use the old one, you can now do that and overwrite the layout itself and assign it to a specific menu. You no longer have to do it for the whole site. You can do it for a specific menu item with just that layout override. It's actually making it much easier for people to change the look of their sites only at the template level as opposed to having to go in and start hacking code. Uh, if you want to learn more about Joomla in Chicago, uh, let me see if I can check what time it is. It's uh, 1.42, okay. If you, uh, you're going to finish a little bit early. Um, if you want to learn more about Joomla in Chicago, there is a Joomla Chicago users group. Uh, it's at joomlachicago.com. There is the CMS Expo coming up in May. Uh, it's a basically a, a conference that happens in Evanston that attracts worldwide uh, people coming in. We'll have people coming from Europe, the UK, Australia, coming in to both come to the Expo and to speak at the Expo. Um, then there's Joomla Day Chicago which is in August. Uh, it'll be hosted downtown at the Microsoft offices, I believe. Um, you can get there at joomladaychicago.com. CMS Expo is cmsexpo.net um, is how you can get to them. Uh, I'm actually going to be speaking at the CMS Expo, Joomla Day Chicago, and I work with and are actually the manager for the Joomla Kickstart, the 101 stuff at Joomla Chicago. Uh, I'm also on the core team at Joomla Chicago, so I'm pretty heavily involved with the Joomla community here in Chicago and nationally. Um, I actually am one of the people working with Joomla Portland in Portland, Oregon, having, helping get their user group going out there. Uh, the Joomla community site, if you want to learn about more of the events that are going on, like I said right now as we speak, well actually it's probably done in France and Netherlands right now, but Joomla Day Netherlands, Joomla Day France, we're both going on today. Uh, Joomla Day New England is also going on right now. Uh, so there are multiple Joomla Days. They just had a Joomla Day India. Uh, there's another conference coming up called uh, J and Beyond that's happening over in Germany um, the weekend after CMS Expo. So we have a lot of people flying in for the Expo that will talk here, get back on a plane and fly over to Germany and go talk again. Um, we get a lot of the big name people, the head of Open Source Matters, which is the legal trademark arm of the Joomla project, um, we're having the president of OSM is actually coming to Chicago for both CMS Expo and Joomla Day Chicago. Uh, we've got a lot of other big names, a lot of the core developers, several of them will be here for both. Uh, so a lot of the Joomla community is actually heavily engaged in Chicago as well. The community site has a list on there for upcoming events. If you want to see if there's something going to be in a city where you're going to or if you go home for the holidays and you want to see if there's something home and you're not from Chicago, check the events page because there may be an event close to you. Uh, I know that in Oregon and the Northwest U.S. we're looking at trying to put together a Joomla Day Northwest uh, sometime next year. Uh, the official Joomla website is joomla.org. 
Uh, there's all kinds of sub websites on it. There's developer, there's community, uh, there's extensions for all the extension lists. Uh, whatever you want to do with Joomla, there is probably a website under the Joomla.org domain for it. Or there are other sites that third-party people have put together specifically for certain things. Uh, there's one called the Art, Art of Joomla.com that's for that one of the core developers for Joomla has put together to help more people learn how to do development in Joomla. Uh, there's How to Joomla that's put on by one another uh, web design colleague of mine that has a lot of tutorials, a lot of information about Joomla. Um, there's tons of tutorial sites out there. We're actually working on one ourselves for uh, my company. We're putting one together um, that's going to be geared towards more of partnering with Joomla and other business people to give you a full-blown sense of uh, what you can do with Joomla. It's primarily focused on Joomla, but you pull people in that know SEO, you pull people in that know usability, know the legal side. It's all about you know getting business people what they need to know in order to you know use, utilize Joomla effectively. So I'm going to pop this up real quick, and then we'll come back to questions. Uh, my company website times2technology.com. That's my email address. If you want to follow me on Twitter, um, my personal account is the first one. Company account is in the middle. The last one is going to be what we're using with our um, our Joomla site that we're building. Um, that's what we use with it. We put out a lot of announcements about uh, third-party upgrades to extensions. So if you're looking to see if something has upgraded recently, we may be tweeting about it. Um, I talk back and forth on my personal account with people from all over the world that do stuff with Joomla. Um, a lot of them are at the Joomla Day Netherlands thing right now, so there's a lot of information coming out about that. My BlackBerry's been going nuts today. Um, but let's open it up right now to questions from the floor. It's 147. We've got to about uh, 220, so got plenty of time to answer questions if anybody has it. Well, uh, the first thing I would do is define, first off, define what you need. Uh, so if you're looking at doing something, I mean, like you need to build, uh, let's just say an event registration system, and you want to you do event registration. Well, you've got to look at, the idea is the more complex it is, the higher up the list it's going to go. If it's an event list, you might be able to do it as a plugin. Uh, and you basically would put it in a database table and that thing pulls it out. There may not be any kind of interface that you access. You just put everything in the database because it comes, maybe it comes from a third party system and just get dumped into your Joomla database. You could potentially do that with a plugin. You could also potentially do it with a module. If you need to be able to manage, edit, delete, update, or basically manipulate any of the data, you're probably going to need to build at least a component that has a back-end interface. There may not be any front-end interface to it. It may only be a module that shows the data, but the more complex it is and the more things you need to do, the more things you need to manage, you're probably looking at a component. If you want to show weather on a website and you want to build something to show weather in a certain city, you can probably do that with a module. So it really all depends on how much functionality you need, what that functionality is, and then you can take a look at the extensions directory and see if somebody's already done it. Because they may have already built a component that does everything you need to do and it's either free or it's very cheap to get it, then you can modify it and make it do exactly what you need because maybe it's missing one part that you really need. And because, you're, because it's open source software and if it's released under the GPL, you can take it, modify it, and then basically use it as much as you need within your own websites. Not in Juma, not in Juma 1.5. Um, I don't believe they added it to 1.6 yet, but the 1.7 release is all about content. So they've been working on a lot of stuff with that. There are versioning systems that have come and gone uh, in Juma, so it's something that people want. Some of the CCKs may actually have versioning built in. I think Flexi Content has versioning built into its CCK. 
uh, some of the others do as well. But in the core, Joomla 1.5 doesn't have it. You'd have to find an extension that does it for you. Uh, I know one of my colleagues here in Chicago built one internally for his own clients. Uh, he's looking at maybe releasing it down the road. Um, he's trying to make it work with 1.6 right now. But ultimately, it's something that um, it's been needed. People want it. People would like to have it. Uh, but for some reason, nobody's ever come around to building it for the core. And again, Joomla is a volunteer-only situation. It does not have, unlike Drupal and WordPress, it does not have this corporate entity sitting up here driving the direction and feeding money into the project. Everything done in Joomla is done on a volunteer basis. So if anybody in the room wants to write a versioning system, I'm sure they'd be very happy to have you come jump on board, pick up a, a branch off of the trunk, and start developing content versioning. Um, that's how things get added to Joomla. That's how things get put in. Um, you'd go to the developer site. They have all the stuff about the APIs and things of that nature um, that you need to understand and learn to start working on that. But yeah, it's something that's been needed. Uh, versioning is something I've been looking for. Um, and it's just been, it's been hit or miss. The ones I have found, it's been hit or miss. Either that or they don't keep, they're not updated very frequently. So it's, it's something that's been needed, but it's not there. Other questions? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, you touched upon ADA compliance. Um, you said one six makes a little better and you're getting rid of tables. Can you expand on ADA compliance and how easy it is to do ADA compliance with Drupal? Um, a lot of it actually has to do with the template itself, how it's built, obviously. Um, getting rid of the, of the table based output from the core went a long way to making it easier. I've never actually had to do an ADA compliant site. Um, so I don't know all the intricacies of it, but I know people that do. Um, if you want to get more about it, I can try to get you in touch with one of them. But I know that it, it has a lot to do with making sure that um, the output of the, of the site is generating the screen readers, there's a lot of testing that goes into it with people that are using the screen readers uh, to come in and test your site. But there is, I'm trying to think, I saw a, an article somebody did put out about it. Um, so there are stuff floating around about Joomla and ADA compliance. Um, I don't know enough about it to get into it. Uh, but there's enough people that have done it that have shared their information that it actually helps. Um, and that's the big thing about the Joomla community as well. A lot of people put out a lot of information out there because they want to help the community, um, either through the Joomla forums, through their own blogging, uh, or anything of that nature. There's a lot of information that gets put out there that normally in a closed system you'd never see. So that's kind of why I like you know, getting involved with the Joomla community and open source in general. It's about the sharing. It really is about getting stuff where it helps everybody. Well, we've got at least at least another 15, 20 minutes. Let me uh, pop back in and see if this will generate any questions. I will actually go in and show you the back end for um, the Joomla 1.6 setup. And again, most of the stuff that happened in 1.6 will stay here or it'll be slightly tweaked for 1.7, but most of the major architecture changes that happened from 1.5 to 1.6 are not going to go away. Um, if they go away, they'll probably go away in 1.8 as opposed to 1.6 or 1.7. Um, so as you can see here, this looks very similar. Um, it is a little bit different, but you've got your user manager here, your navigation again, your content. They kept components split from extensions. Um, there was talk about actually putting components back under extensions. It would make more sense, but they decided to leave it out. Um, but with the menus, it's the same setup. Uh, you have your menu manager, which is creating the buckets. And then you have the individual items themselves. And then within the menus as well, um, you will have, let's go down to your profile. You then have your tie-in with your module assignment for that menu, uh, your metadata options, your page display options, 
link type options, basic options. Um, like I said, not everything defines all these pieces. So when you look at a menu, you may not have everything here. Um, I was looking for, here's your access levels. Uh, the customer access level is one of the new groups or one of the new access levels that you can do within Joomla with the users now. Uh, you can assign the specific access here. So you can change that from here when you define it elsewhere. Uh, up top here you can see the save and close, the save, the new, save as copy. Uh, under users you have your groups. So here's where you can define, uh, they define the standard groups and then you have, you can do your own. Shop suppliers is a group under registered. Customer group is a group at basically the same level as the author. So they've defined several different groups within uh, the new group system within Joomla. And then from there, if we look at customer group, um, it basically gives you what the group parent is. Uh, you're, this is effectively just creating buckets. There's not really any control inside the group. The control actually uh, comes in at the access level itself. So here's where you would come in and then define some more about the access levels uh, as to what, you know, groups have view access. Um, that's where I just was. And let's see, under Let's go to the article manager. All right, here's where you get to the actual permissions. So at the individual levels, at the articles, the category, um, even at some of the component levels, then you can come in and actually define, you know, what a publisher can actually do with this article. In this case, it's all inherited. Uh, the calculated setting is not allowed because everything above it has said they can't delete it. So at the super user level, you end up getting everything allowed because they're a super admin, obviously. Uh, but at the customer group, you get not allowed. So they can't do anything with this article in relation to editing or deleting. Um, with the ACL, I will warn you, you can easily brick your site just like you can your iPhone or anything else. Um, if you change the public permissions, you're changing permissions for absolutely everything on the site, including super users. To me, they screwed up the name. It should have been global in the first place. It should have been global access and then there should have been a public access under that. So they kind of missed it on the nomenclature, but just keep in mind, don't change public and you'll be fine. <laughs> um, if you want to change anything that is somebody managing something you want to change at that particular level. Like the manager, although administrator sort of comes from manager, it's inheriting the other direction. So usually anything below it is inheriting from what's above. It's kind of backwards. So the man administrator has everything the manager can do plus more. So if you look at it that way and you see how it's laid out here, the tree is backwards. So it's kind of doing a backwards thing and that's been one of the huge complaints about the ACL. It was rushed, it's backwards, it's not quite understandable. So hopefully somebody's trying to fix it for either 1.7 or 1.8. Um, there's a lot of people working on it. Um, you may hear a lot about distributions and potential forks of Joomla or people that have taken certain things and gone certain directions. Um, there is a current distribution that's in progress that's called Malaho. Uh, it's actually Joomla mixed up and with a different name. Um, it's going to be a distribution of Joomla that's going to be geared towards certain functionality like doing e-commerce or something like that. But what is also happening is a lot of the people that started building that distribution are original core developers or are major players in Joomla that are wanting to fix certain things. They're doing it in Malaho and they're pushing it back to the actual Joomla project itself. So it's now up to the Joomla project to take 
the code that's being developed outside of the standard Joomla trunk and migrating it, merging it back in, and it's their decision to do it or not, which is kind of annoying within the community. It doesn't really, it's not exactly how it should be being done, but they saw no choice but to do this, to force Joomla to actually kind of start relying on the community more because it was, even though it's not, it was acting like a very closed environment and it shouldn't have been and that's forcing people to actually open up. If you follow Joomla at all, you'll also hear about the Nuku framework, you know, OKU. There's also now a Nuku server. Um, the guy that started both of those was one of the original starters of the Joomla project. Um, he decided to kind of go off on his own. He took the Joomla 1.5 architecture, chopped it down to its bare minimum that what he wanted to keep, and then he now created the Nuku framework that basically replaces the Joomla API framework uh, with a new one, and he's only using the parts of Joomla in the Nuku server that he really wants, like the user manager and some of the other pieces that actually work and work well. Um, he's taken that and taken the Nuku server and taken only what he needs, put the framework on top of it, his framework, and is actually creating more or less kind of a Joomla fork. Um, they're trying not to call it a fork, but it really is. Um, it's just something that they wanted to go a different direction. They wanted to base it on 1.5, so that's what they ended up doing. Will stuff that is built for 1.5 run on Nuku server? Yes. Will stuff that's built for 1.6 run on it? No. Uh, because they based it on the architecture of 1.5, but what they wanted to do was make a better framework. Can you use the Nuku framework in the Joomla 1.5 standard site? Yes, you can. Can you use it in the 1.6 site? Yes, you can. But what you're doing there is you're basically moving outside the Joomla API and you're using their framework. So instead of using Joomla calls, you're going to use Nuku calls to make your extension work. There are a lot of extensions right now that are using the Nuku framework. They were very easily able to convert from Joomla 1.5 to 1.6. They had to change almost nothing. So they just had to wait for the guy to get the Nuku framework to make sure it functions with Joomla 1.6. Once that was done, they ported their product and they're done. So it just depends on what you see as the Joomla API, other APIs that have come out, if they all coexist happily, there's no reason you have to stick with one or the other. That's the nice thing about the Joomla community itself. It does actually work well with that. Other questions? Recommend uh, just upgrading, or would you recommend having building a new site and then Depends. Uh, the standard question. It depends. Um, the problem is that not everything you might need, and this is the kicker as to whether you go to 1.6 or you stay on 1.5. Uh, 1.5, like I said, is supported till next April, so it's not a rush. The thing you need to look at is what are you using in 1.5 right now? Are the extensions you're using in 1.5 available in 1.6? If the answer is yes, then you can look at doing, going ahead and doing a migration now to 1.6 because then everything else is, should be nothing more than an upgrade for getting up to the next LTS. If stuff you're working in 1.5 right now is not available in 1.6, then my recommendation is to wait until that stuff is available. If the functionality you need right now and you're not, you don't have any website, and you're looking at choosing which one to go with, if what you think you're going to need is available in 1.6, build it on 1.6. Go ahead and start with 1.6. Don't even bother with 1.5. If all you need is core content stuff inside Joomla, definitely do 1.6 because you don't have to worry about anybody else's extensions being ready for 1.6 yet. If you've got functionality that you're going to need in the future but you don't need right now, you're going to want to look for it to find out if it exists at all. If it exists, is the person developing it migrating to 1.6 or not? Are they just going to drop it? Are they going to move it to 1.6? Did it become obsolete? Because there's some things that happen in 1.6 that kind of made some other people's products go obsolete because they're, they're now in the core. They don't need them anymore. Except that in some cases, the people's products were actually better than the core. So in that case, you want to check and see if they're going to continue the updates and keep on going with the new architecture. So right now, I haven't built any 1.6 sites yet because 
all the people I'm talking to, if they have a GM15 site already and they're talking to me, we're keeping them on 1.5 because the stuff they need is not there yet. Um, some of the newer sites I'm looking at right now that don't need extra functionality, we're seriously looking at 1.6, but it's also a customer decision. I put it to them and say, Jumo 1.6 is here, it works, it functions, but 1.5 is here, it's more stable, it's more secure. We would build it with 1.6, we'd have no problem building it 1.6, it would work fine, but it's your choice. If the client says, we don't want to use that new of a technology, then we'll do it with 1.5. And if we're only using the core, it's going to be very easy to migrate to 1.6, 1.6 or 1.7 as they become more, more mature. Because everything in 1.6 is likely to be in 1.7, either in its current state or improved. So it's only going to be getting more mature as it goes along. The only thing that won't be are any new features that are added in 1.7 that was not there in 1.6. Their idea was to have updates coming out about every two to three weeks. Um, that hasn't happened <laughs> because they've been spending the last three months developing Juma 1.7. So the idea was to have people still doing 1.6 up until about April 1st, and then everybody concentrates on getting 1.7 out the door. So we should have been seeing a lot more upgrades to 1.6 and even 1.5, but they just it just hasn't happened. It's a brand new brand new release cycle, they're still kind of working on it, still trying to work out the, the little, quote, bugs in the, in the process. So hopefully that'll get better with 1.7. You'll see things going a little better, more releases coming out that are fixing or adding functionality as opposed to fixing security holds. So, all right, any other questions? So, so do we come to migrate from 1.5 next year? You would have to migrate to whatever the current version is for a long-term support at that time. You don't have to, but as of April of 2012, no security patches, no updates, no anything will happen for 1.5 any longer. You don't have to migrate. You can keep it on 1.5 as long as you want. If you're happy with it and there are no security bugs that come out that expose your site, you can keep it as long as you want. There's still people on Joomla 1.0 sites right now. So you don't have to upgrade, but it doesn't hurt. It actually doesn't hurt to go ahead and start looking at it now and seeing what's going to need to happen so that you get on the next long-term support cycle, which will be January of next year is when it should be released. By the time 1.5 goes into life, that version should be stable enough that you should be able to get to it without any problem. Most of the extension developers will have their stuff converted and ready to go for that next 1.8, the, the 1.8 or whatever it's called, release next January. Most of them will have been converted to the new architecture and it's not going to be a major deal. Other questions? Yes, you can. Um, there are, there's a core system that comes with Joomla that does search engine friendly URLs. It's not the best in the world. Um, it's had improvements made to it, but if you don't like what gets generated with it, there are third party components that do more advanced and more involved um, SEF functionality. So if you wanna do custom URLs, you're either gonna have to learn how to do it in HT Access and write the code, or you can grab one of these other components, install it, and you do it through the graphical interface. Uh, but it converts the index.php, question mark, blah, 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 all that stuff that nobody ever can remember. It converts it into section, category, article name. So that for as far as Google's concerned, that's the URL, not something that's like this long. So yes, you can convert them. Uh, that's one of the other reasons to use like a content management system as well. Most of them have ways to build in at the SEF URLs. You don't have to have those massively long query strings to show up as your URL so that people can actually get something they can remember. Like on our website right now, we have a landing page, uh, or will, for Joomla Day Chicago um, because we're, we're going to be sponsoring it. Um, our landing page would be times2technology.com slash joomla-day-chicago.html. That's the SEF version of it. Otherwise, it would be index.php question view equals com content, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, so yeah, there, it's easily, easily able to do either with the core or with an add-on, with an extension. No, actually it, it's generated automatically. You can alter it if you don't like it, but the system itself, once you load a page and it actually generates, uh, it'll actually go through and every link on the page, it'll generate an SCF URL in the back end. So that when somebody comes in to access a page on the site, it actually looks in the database and says, what's the SEF URL for this? And puts it out to the browser. So when the server gets the request, it converts it to the SEF URL at that point. So that what the user sees in their address bar is the SEF URL or backwards compatible. So if somebody comes in with an SEF URL, it just verifies where it needs to go, tells Joomla, give me this page, and then that's what gets displayed. If somebody comes in with the index.php version of it, it will do the conversion on the fly, find it in the database, and spit out the content. So you don't have to program anything unless you want a custom URL. Then with some of the, uh, some of the graphical versions, some of the extensions that do this, you go into the back end, you take one of the current URLs to that page you want, and you modify it, and that becomes a custom URL. It does all the HT access programming for you. And in some cases, it doesn't even use HT access at all. It actually does everything kind of on the fly. And it does not slow it down any noticeable amount. Some of them do write the, the changes to HT access, so it does actually speed it up just a little bit, but you really won't notice the difference. Well, that's all I have. I'll throw my uh, contact information back up for you guys if you want to get it, if you didn't get it before. Um, and then I'll make sure that if anybody wants these, uh, I'll make sure that Stephen and his group ends up getting uh, the slides. They'll be on SlideShare, so they'll be able to be posted here, or I can give them a link that they can get to it as well if they wherever they want to post it. So that's all I got.